tell me about your program. We're not so much a program, but probably define us as arts programming and curatorship within a art gallery, within a, an interpretive center. Mm -hmm. So we're a department that's part of a larger center, which contains visitor services, amongst other things. So Wanuskewin Galleries deals primarily with contemporary Indigenous art-related arts programming. Is there an age group or a target audience? No, there's no age group. Mind you, a lot of the content is probably above the heads of smaller children. So I would say it can range from about maybe grade five and up okay. to elderly. And what is like the aim of the program? So Wanuskewin is an interpretive center, center. So we're interpreting the culture of our people on the Northern Plains. So some of our focuses on interpreting the Northern Plains cultures is archaeology, ethnography, traditional ceremony, food, what have you. So a lot of that content is relegated to the past. So the goal of the galleries is to feature contemporary narratives of Indigenous people so that it complements those past narratives. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're focusing on Indigenous contemporary worldview through visual culture. What are the, like, well, I guess you kind of said this, but the learning objectives of the, of the galleries? Well, it's just basically to relay Indigenous worldview. So that can encompass narratives about our history, post-colonialism. It's just whatever the artist is talking about. Like, for example, the show we have now is on Indigenous superheroes, you mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's about trickster narratives, which is a traditional story, but it's brought into the contemporary so that it can be related to people who, are, who like comic strips or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how do you measure the success of the, the gallery? It's difficult because galleries are kind of seen as a, a white cube and a lot of Indigenous people often don't feel like they're a part of gallery culture or arts culture. Like mm -hmm. they feel like it's kind of a white man institution and so part of our job is to kind of introduce visual culture to our people who are very familiar with it through traditional mediums but yeah. the contemporary is sometimes not so familiar or a little foreign so that's part of my job is to create that visibility in our community my first and fo foremost audience is indigenous people mm -hmm. and then after that it's, you know tourists and non-indigenous people from the local area but my first and foremost uh, thought is always our own people. Is there a demand or is it like a high um, enrollment? Like, do lots of people come here? There's a, a huge art community in Saskatoon, mm -hmm. and there's a huge Indigenous art community in Saskatoon. So we're kind of an anomaly in, in um, Canada because mm -hmm. a lot of contemporary artists actually come out of Saskatchewan. So we have a lot of support from the art community so there's a lot of artists that want to show their work here because we're an indigenous institution so in that aspect we're quite successful mm -hmm. because it's not we're not like like a white gallery you know where an indian is trying to get in and right. get their work and they're just blocked at the door mm -hmm. we're like on an indigenous traditional site and we're a beautiful big gallery and so we have a lot of support from our, our community in that respect in your opinion, uh, what is Indigenous education? Indigenous education, I see as, it's a number of things. It's, it's our history, it's our, like I keep saying over and over again, our contemporary worldview. Like, because our stories, our narratives are, need to be disseminated to the wider public so people understand us mm -hmm. as a people. Because we're either looked at as, you know, not existing and we're kind of like this invisible fantasy race that doesn't exist or else we're this stereotype or what have you. So, you know, that's, that's the beauty of visual culture. It kind of brings out all those things. So Indigenous education is, you know, passed down from our own people, you know, and taught. Like, for example... You know, I, I live with grandparents and they didn't tell me um, how to do things like make bannock or beadwork or whatever. I had to watch and that's how I was taught. You know, I wasn't told 
how to do things. Yeah. That's kind of the Western way of doing things yeah. in schools and stuff. So we differ. We have our own ways of teaching, I guess. How would you define the word Indigenous? Is this a term you would normally use? I have been using it. I know it's kind of, it changes, you know, decade to decade. Um, for a long time I used Aboriginal, but I just see it as, you know, our first peoples. But that encompasses to me, even, you know, our Métis people, our um, non-status. Mm. It's, it's anyone that belongs to this land is how I view Indigenous. And I think Métis people are a part of that because their first ancestors are our people, right? Mm -hmm. So, How would you define education from an Indigenous perspective? I don't know, like it's like, I don't, I don't see the Western point of view of education, you know, getting a degree and all that as education. I think those things are important because of colonialism and we have to survive and navigate this world and we kind of need to utilize those things to survive because that's the reality, right? It's almost like we need to overcompensate. We need PhDs and masters just to be recognized you know, for the work, whereas someone who's non-Indigenous can get by on a lesser degree in experience, you know what I mean? So, but I think the deficit is when we don't have our elders to teach us or healthy elders to teach us about, Not I'm not talking about traditional ceremony or anything like that. It's like, I always go back to how I was raised by old people, you know, like how to respect each other, how to live, how to n navigate the world in a healthy and good way in yeah. a positive way and I think that's that's the deficit our young people have is like they don't have have our old people um, as much and yeah I think those are skills that we need to pass to our children you know to be respectful to be kind you know like those are the lateral violence that goes on in our communities is colonialism you know it's not that's not who we are so that to me is the education, Indigenous education. What is your vision for the future of Indigenous education in your community and in Canada? I think it just goes back to nurturing those those skills that we learned individually. Like how, you know, I was taught by old people, I have children, so I teach them not to lip off. And mm -hmm. like things that are acceptable in today's culture is not acceptable in my home you know what I mean like um, so trying to pass on those things to my own kids so that they can pass it on and then with the galleries like I view that as indigenous education in the sense that we're educating the general public about our people on a daily basis and that's super important especially right now with um, what's been going on because it's it's done in such a way sometimes it's through humor it's a it's a way um it's used like strategies indigenous strategies of humor um what else is there even traditional stories like you can use visual culture to teach people about hard difficult knowledge you know what i mean yeah. things they don't want to hear anymore because it becomes tedious like yes there's violence 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 and then people just don't want to listen anymore they want to close their ears off but um, contemporary art has a really kind of sneaky way of still relaying those really difficult stories and knowledges so mm -hmm. it's it's very good strategically so aside from the programs in which you are personally involved mm -hmm. what information do you have on other indigenous education programs in Canada well I don't know in, in terms of indigenous programs but like just staying connected with the ind indigenous art community is um, really keeping up to speed with curatorial practice that's going on in the country and um, different methodologies that other colleagues are using I have to be always on top of that mm -hmm. and even on top of trends you know like there's a lot of trends that go on in the art community so always educating myself through my colleagues and my peers and I have to do the research myself so it's a lot of work.